Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and today we are back with another installment of Common Design Mistakes. Today we'll be talking about kids' bedrooms from the toddler stage to teens to young adults. Really it's all about the rooms that transition from age to age. This is the age where they're ever growing, ever evolving with their lifestyle and hobbies. I mean, how do we as parents keep up with their changing needs? I believe that it's really important to instill a love of creative arts at a very young age. From culture, food, fashion, even travel, basically expose your kids to everything that you enjoy so that you can cultivate a love of curiosity, design, arts, and media at a young age which can hopefully impact the rest of their lives. By doing this, we can gain key insight into their likes and dislikes, what they naturally gravitate towards, and use that as inspiration to design a space that looks and feels like them, with lots of flexibility and tons of room to grow. Let's talk about the top 10 most common design mistakes I see made in kids' bedrooms and share solutions on how you can effectively resolve them. The biggest mistake I see made is going overboard with the theme. Baseball theme. Princess theme. Paw Patrol theme. I mean, I love Disneyland as much as the next person, but I don't want my kids being surrounded by cartoon characters all day. Think about your children's hobbies and find creative ways to incorporate that. If they're into dinosaurs, consider using a neutral yet sophisticated color palette and accessorizing the room with fossils and natural finishes that look like they could have been prehistoric. Consider accents and accessories that acknowledge your child's hobby without making them feel bound by it as they evolve and transition. The next common design mistake I see made is Crayola colors on the walls. Just because it's a kid's room does not mean you have to get inspired from their crayon box. You don't want your child to grow up hating a certain color because it was done badly in their childhood room. Figure out the dominant color you would like to feature and choose a softer version of that hue. Something less saturated will feel less in your face. The subtlety can be just as powerful. Another design mistake I see made, and really a missed opportunity, is blank white walls. If you're at a loss at how to decorate all that wall space, don't leave them blank and uninspired. You want to keep the eyes moving and engaged. The easiest way to do this is with playful wallpaper. Think about the mood and feeling you're trying to evoke and select a paper with a pattern or color story that helps bring that feeling out.
Kids' interests change rapidly and suddenly, so be careful about committing to kitschy patterns or you'll be spending a fortune swapping it out. This is probably a rare time that I don't mind a focal wallpapered wall. Another common design mistake is specifying kitty furniture. Furniture with frilly accents, shorter profiles, or even kids sized pieces are a recipe for constant change and can get expensive to swap out. The nature of kids rooms is that they evolve more quickly than any other room in the house. You don't want to be redecorating every two years. Use this simple strategy instead. Furnish kids' rooms with the same furniture you would use in any other room. A nice dresser that you can place a changing pad on top of, which you can simply remove down the line in lieu of an expensive changing table. Opt for full size and queen size beds from the get go since twin beds have a shorter lifespan. The key to great design in a kid's room is curating investment pieces that can work for any age. This can also include family heirloom pieces like a solid wood dresser, or even an old lounge chair that you can reupholster throughout the years. While we're on the subject of furniture, think about spending on the key pieces that your child uses most. Maybe a cool desk and a sturdy chair to encourage study. Or even a sculptural accent chair. Or a custom bed frame. Invest in one wow piece as opposed to accessories like bedding and window treatments that get swapped out as your children grow. You don't have to spend a fortune on furniture, just think of a high-low mix. IKEA pieces look fabulous with antiques. Consider your budget and prioritize accordingly. Another design mistake I see made is no designation of zones. Kids tend to run amok and use the entire room as their play area. There's no distinction between sleep, play, study. So it's up to you as a parent to help to find these key zones. If you don't compartmentalize different functions for specific walls and areas, the entire room can get pretty chaotic and cluttered pretty fast. Keep storage compartments and bookshelves close to their desk area and away from the bed. Sometimes the kids' rooms are small and little zones aren't feasible. In this case, use all that vertical wall space to designate zones like study, sleep, and play.
Another design mistake I see made is specifying fragile or precious finishes. Expect that this room is going to get beat up. You want to source durable fabrics and materials that are easy to wipe down and clean. Instead of a glass top nightstand, choose wood or a lacquered piece that can't accidentally get broken. Instead of a silk wool rug, try a poly silk blend that you can vacuum right up if something accidentally spills. Look for performance upholstery fabrics that can be easily wiped down or vacuumed. If you lay down wall-to-wall -wall carpet, source something that is sturdy and stain resistant with durable fibers like nylon or even polypropylene as opposed to silk or loop carpet styles. The next design mistake I see made is forgetting about layers of light. Recessed lights and desk lamps just aren't enough. You can still achieve a high design aesthetic with a small budget if you focus on the statement lighting pieces. A fabulous chandelier or overhead pendant can help ground the space. Wall sconces can help free up nightstand surface space and they work great in kids' rooms so they don't accidentally knock over table lamps. If the kids are a little bit older, that table lamp can work great as a reading nightlight. Another common design mistake, the wrong window treatments or simply none at all. Privacy and light control is just as important in the kids' rooms as it is in any other room in the house, especially for young children when full blackout is more conducive to deeper sleep. Source layers of window treatments for this purpose. Line shades for inset windows can be layered with pretty drapery panels. That's my favorite combination to use. If the kids are young, make sure you source cordless window treatments or separate safety devices to keep cords out of the way. Another key design mistake I see made is starting with the accents. Accessories should come last, just like paint. Invest in the bones and structure of the space and build the design up from there. Wall paneling looks awesome in a kid's room because you can create visual impact without overly accessorizing the walls. Think about wall paneling, board and batten molding, wainscoting, If you choose to wallpaper a portion above half-paneled walls, you can easily replace this paper down the line and save on a complete room overhaul. Invest in the structure and create great bones for the room before blowing the budget on accents and accessories. And lastly, not making room for the magic. I believe that children's rooms are the perfect place in your home for a little whimsy and fun. You want to encourage a sense of play and fantasy, especially before they become teens and may grow out of this stage. Think about utilizing a small corner to build a fort, to install a little swing, to set up a teepee, 
or even throw in some bean bags. Have fun, let loose, and allow your imagination to run wild when designing kids' rooms. As they grow up, they may have some input like color or some patterns and graphics, but expect that you will be doing a bulk of the work. So in order to learn and observe more about our children and their hobbies, start by exploring the city that you live in. Go to museums, visit local monuments, get outside, admire the cityscape and enjoy the natural surroundings to see what lights them up. Observation is an integral step in finding inspiration and helping to adapt it in our own spaces. As we explore alongside our children, we might observe that we naturally see the world through fresh lens just like them. And that's the key to great design. Being able to share our story, who we are, where we've been, and where we hope to go with our personal choices when it comes to interior design. I hope you guys got some really great tips when it comes to designing your kids' rooms. Remember just to have fun with it. Kids grow at such a rapid pace and we only have this finite time to create something really magical for them. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any other rooms you want to see design mistakes for. Share this series with all of your friends and family. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.